class two equilibrium constant expression problems, examples here for us to try. Uh, so here it's giving us those equilibrium molarities of all the chemicals in this balanced chemical equation. And we're going to figure out the equilibrium constant once again. So products over reactants. So I'm going to take that SO3. It's a gas, so it can have a molarity. And it also has a two in this balanced equation. So our coefficients in the balanced equation become exponents in our equilibrium expression. That's going to go over our SO2, which is also going to be squared because of this two, times our oxygen, which just has an imaginary one here, so no exponent in our equilibrium expression. Now we just need to plug in the numbers that they told us. So it says in the problem right here, the molarity of our SO3 is 1.01 .01 times 10 to the negative two. We would have to square that over our SO2 concentration, which they tell us right here is 3.61 times 10 to the negative third, also squared times our oxygen concentration that they tell us right here. 6.11 times 10 to the negative fourth. Throw that in your calculator. Your calculator is going to spit out uh, 12,811, but we only get three sig figs when you look at those three molarities that you were provided. So we're going to round that to 12,800. Is this a forward reaction that's favored or is the reverse reaction favored? Well, this time our KEQ is much greater than one. So if the KEQ is much greater than one, now we have this situation going on where we have lots of products, very few reactants. The forward reaction is favored, it's products favored. So we have this happening. in this reaction. Last one. If you have ammonia gas, uh, you can dissolve that in water to turn it into aqueous ammonia. And then that can dissolve in that water and break up into ammonium ions and hydroxide ions. In this problem, it's telling us what the KEQ value is tells us some equilibrium concentrations and it wants us to find the concentration of the ammonium and hydroxide ions. So all the ones that we've been doing so far have had a solve for K, but it might have you solve for a different part of the expression. So let's see what we know. First, let's write an equilibrium expression. So we have to do products over reactants. So that ammonium ion is aqueous, it would have a molarity. The hydroxide ion, aqueous, it would have a molarity. The ammonia would also have a molarity, but I'm gonna leave the water out because it's a liquid. Solids and liquids don't go in equilibrium expressions. They don't have molarities. Let's start substituting in everything that we know. It tells us right here that the KEQ is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. So I'm going to put that in the KEQ spot. We also know that the equilibrium concentration of the NH3 is 6.82 times 10 to the negative third. So I'll put that down here. Finally, now we have to solve for the concentration of the ammonium and the hydroxide ions. It does tell us in this sentence right here that the equilibrium concentrations for the ammonium is the same as the equilibrium concentration for the hydroxide. So we don't know what the concentration of the ammonium is, but we do know that whatever it is, it's the same number as the hydroxide. So let's call that ammonium X. And that means the hydroxide is also X. 
In other words, x squared over 6.82 times 10 to the negative third. Now we just have a little algebra problem where we have to solve for that x. x, if you go to type that in your calculator, would be 0 0.00035 molar, or perhaps you might see it written as 3.5 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. Both would be okay.